Hello everybody. Okay, today we come to the mid section of chapter 18, magnetism. Okay, we we previously we talked about what is manic, how do we how do we well, what material is can be used to make to make a manic, and we actually talk about the properties of manic, how the attraction and repulsion, light poles and light poles, and we also have touch base with uh, the idea of making a manic. How do we make a manic? And we also talk about how do we actually how do we make and destroy the magnetism inside a particular manac. And now in this section here, we will talk about how do you represent that magnetic effect? Or uh, to be exact, how do we represent that magnetism? Where can we actually, how, how can we represent that effect in maybe on paper? How do you visualize that magnetic, uh, magnetic effect? And this particular topic here, we talk about one, way, uh, one important section of visualizing that magnetism. Okay, and that is what we mean by magnetic fields. A magnetic field is, uh, is, is how we visualize the magnetic effects of a manic. Okay, and this is what this section is about, magnetic field. Okay, magnetic field loosely explained is the re area whereby you, the, the material actually experience the magnetic force, the, ex the attraction and the repulsions, the uh, repulsion that we mentioned in the earlier topics. Okay, and that field, okay, is, it, it can, can be represented in, uh, I would say, it can be represented in various ways, okay, whereby we look at, later on we look at the drawings of the magnetic fields, okay, whereby if a single magnet, north and south, it will have actually a certain pattern. If you have a two magnets, okay, the magnetic field, the combined magnetic field will be a different magnet. Three magnets, the magnetic field will be again be different. But all these different magnetic fields, it, all these different magnetic fields, magnetic patterns, it actually goes down to one basic ways of doing. Okay, the idea of drawing the magnetic fields, even it magnetic fields lines, even though the patterns are different, but it has actually one common uh, way of doing it. And this is what the, this topic is going, uh, what this video is going to be about. Okay, we are looking at the field, we are looking at how do we create or recreate the field that's around the magnet. Now, if you look at the magnetic field lines here, the if you look, if you Google on our website or in textbook, you'll find that this is where the magnetic field lines. The magnetic field lines is actually a representation of the magnetic field patterns. It's the area, it represents the area whereby the magnetic magnetism is actually experienced by other, uh, other matters. Okay, it's all the, the magnetic field uh, produced by the magnet itself. Okay, and this is where we will tell the, uh, this field actually tell the user or tell the other magnet where the magnetic force can be experienced. Okay, and in general, we always you always see this arrow, this line. You always see this arrow is always point in a certain direction. Okay, and it's, the direction that we are looking out for is actually is from north pole to south pole. Okay, and the the way we draw the magnetic field line is that we will make sure that you always start from the north to the south. Look at the arrow; it always start from the north. You end with the south, and we also make sure that the field line doesn't cross or intersect each other. Okay, one of the primary reason that it doesn't intersect means it doesn't crisscross. It's because of the fact that the few lines it represent it actually represent where the north pole or the south poles are actually being felt. And one of the common understanding that we want to present to everybody or the idea behind the few lines is that light pole, light poles repel. And because if each of the few lines represent a pole, okay, start from north pole to south pole, it represents the pole itself. You'll find that because they represent the, fo the pole itself, you'll find that light poles, they tend to repel each other. So that's why the, 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 the chances of them crossing each other or intersection, intersecting each other is virtually zero. Because light poles, they are supposed to repel each other. They are not supposed to cross each other. Okay, so that's why you will find that the field lines is always started from north to south and it's always, it will never cross each other. Okay, and there's one thing that you need to know is that the field lines, okay, the stronger field lines, are actually drawn closer to each other. Meaning, if you look at the spacing behind these two, okay, and the spacing behind this area, you'll find that the spacing between the lines is actually broader as it's spread out. Okay, and it's nearer because, and when it's nearing to the manner itself. And this is what we are trying to present to the to everybody, is that the few lines is drawn closer to represent the few strength is actually stronger towards the manner. And the few lines are actually drawn further apart, spread out, to represent the magnetic effect is actually weaker. And I and this is actually quite logical because as you're nearing to the manic itself, you're nearing to the structure itself, the manic itself, 
the magnetism effect it will be actually stronger. And when it's spread out, okay, you spread out bigger surface, the magnetism effect will actually lose, will actually be weaker because the coverage is actually increased. You increase the coverage, the strength has to reduce. Okay. Now, same thing. When you look at the, the few lines, okay, when you look at the few lines, there are different ways of drawing the few lines, okay. The for example, for uh two pieces of mat, uh north and south pole, unlike pole. You have you have this particular pattern and you have a uh, light post north and north you have this particular area here now how do we get to drawing the few lines here okay the few lines here what we are trying to do here is we actually uses a north pole we let's say we can use a compass okay so what we do now is we actually place the compass in any directions okay so let's say i'm going to place a compass here okay the compass will actually point in a certain direction. Okay, why? Because compass, it has North Pole and South Pole. Okay, so when you put the compass at this location here, you will find that the compass will be oriented in a certain direction like this. It will be pointing downwards. Why? Because the compass South Pole and the compass North Pole will be here. And why is it in this direction? Because South and North, okay, they will attract each other. Okay, because unlike pole attracts. So what you do now is at this location, you mark this arrow. So now you move the compass towards another location. You let it, you put on the table, let it swing freely. You'll find that the compass will have a certain direction again. No point in another direction. Same thing, you repeat the thing at other location. You'll find that the compass will be pointing in a certain different direction. So what you do now, you jot down all this direction. And after that, once you reach the north to the south pole, you reach the other end of the manac, you have what we call the few lines of that particular manac. So what you do now is you just join them together. And that will be the few line that you have for that manac. So what you do now is you repeat this process at different locations. And if you repeat it for enough, uh, more, more and more location, for example, in this case, I will place a manac here again. The arrow will be this way. Okay, because the manac north pole will point upwards the south pole will point downwards why because south and north they are unlike poles they will attract so if you repeat this you will have different arrows many arrows arrows okay so this is what i mean by the few lines happening okay so what you do is you repeat the process of using a compass at any location at every location and you will have these lines being drawn being recorded and this is what we mean by few lines and this is how we actually derive the magnetic few lines Okay, then similarly, if you have a two light pole, same similarly, if you two light pole, you put the arrow, you point upwards. Okay, but surprisingly, you'll find that what we call repulsion. You'll find that these two few lines. Okay, let's say if I have two magnet here, two compass here, you'll find that these two magnet, the north and north pole, they will repel each other. They will never see eye to eye. They will repel repel each other, and because of that, you'll find that the lines actually. Have a little bit of diversion here. They as if they are trying to divert each other. They are trying to get rid of each other. They don't want to see each other. So they are. This is what we, what 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 they are trying to represent it, and this is what, what we're trying to infer it as in light poles actually repel from each other. So when it repel, you actually have the few lines being drawn in this manner. Okay, and you'll be surprised that there, because of the repulsion, there's a gap of what we call a null region. This null region N U L L. Okay, it's an area whereby you have zero magnetic fields. Okay, and why is it zero? Because the few lines from both light poles, they actually repel each other and it actually create a, a area whereby it has absence of magnetic field lines. Okay, what you call now field. Okay, and of course, with this, okay, you can look at, you can refer back to a textbook or your notes that you have. Okay, you'll find that different poles are uh, different magnets, north and south pole, two north pole, your horseshoe magnet. They all have different uh, various magnetic uh, field lines, different. Okay, and but the common thing about all these field lines, all these patterns is that the field lines, the way we draw the field lines, how we derive the field lines, the field pattern is actually the same by the use of compass and I just plot it. This is what we call plotting. Okay, I plot the few lines from the magnet. I do it line by line, area by area, point by point. Okay, for all types of magnet, I will get different few lines, different pattern. So rule of thumb, okay, you have to make sure it's like these lines. Okay, you have to make sure that the few lines always point from north to south, and the few lines don't cross each other. And you have to make sure that the few line actually is stronger towards the magnet because they are stronger and it get weaker. It means it draw further away. 
okay, as it go outwards. Okay, of course, the exact manifold line you may want, okay, you may want to actually refer back to your teachers who are who is teaching you to get some a more detailed practice or to actually show it to your teachers to check whether the few lines are correct or wrong. Okay, if not, okay, you can actually up, just upload to the comment bar at the bottom there. Okay, I can just take a look, uh, I can just uh, try my best to take a look for you. Okay, and the different very few lines. Yeah, of course, uh, if not, uh, if you want, you can go to the to google.com. Okay, you can do a simple search of Google and then maybe you can just search at the Google search bar to see magnetic field line between two magnets, north and south, or maybe north, north and south part, or maybe a U-shaped magnet. You can look for the magnetic field lines. Of course, uh, point of caution. Okay, if you Google your answers, you Google anything from the Google, uh, from the internet, from the World Wide Web. Okay, please, please, okay, always look at the source and always check your answer because whatever you find online may not be 100% correct. Okay, so if you're not sure, okay, whatever you find online, you can show it to your teachers or you can just uh, attach it in the comment bar. I can just take a look from you and I will try my best to see whether it's correct or wrong. If not, I can actually look, ask around to look for other experts to help you clear your doubts. Okay, now the, one of the, the last point that we are mentioning is this. Okay, the north-north, when you look at light poles, okay, we have, you'll find that the light poles because of repulsion, you have the ability to create a now zone. Okay, the now zone is actually quite useful and it's actually quite useful in what we call to create a magnetic shielding. Magnetic shielding is you want to create an area whereby you don't have or you don't experience any magnetic field effects. Okay, you don't experience any magnetic field lines, any magnetism. Okay, so, but of course, the easy way whenever I ask questions to these students, uh, this question to students, students just say, hey, if I don't magnetism, why? I can just remove the manic. If there's no manic nearby, I will not have magnetism. Okay, that is, I will not say that's the wrong answer, but this answer is partially correct or partially wrong because we tend to forget about the earth magnetic field lines. Because with the earth magnetic field lines all around us, you actually have magnetic field lines around us, even though the manic is like nowhere inside, it's far, far away. And even like, uh, you have other appliances like handphone, all these things. You does have many few lines around us. So what happens if I want to have hundred percent? I don't want to experience any many few lines, even the earth magnetic few lines. Okay, I don't want to experience. It could be because it could be in the hospital whereby I want to get rid of. I want to. Uh, the uh, I have sensitive equipment. Many few lines may play some tricks on my uh, on my equipment, or maybe I'm doing some testing which or science lab testing, I'm sensitive to few lines. My equipment are sensitive equipment. I want to get rid of the few lines. So how do I do it? And in this case, we will actually make use of shielding. Okay. Shielding is uh shielding is a way whereby I can actually I can actually hundred percent or almost ninety nine percent get rid of the few lines experience, minimizing the few lines. So what do I do now is this. Okay. So now I actually have a I will make use of a magnetic material. Okay. The equip so what we have is this object here, it has to be a magnetic material. Okay, example, it could be iron, iron. So what I do now is I will place it, okay, in the middle of the location here, our middle of the area that I want. So example, maybe this area is the one that I, I want to put my sensitive equipment. So I do want magnetic lines to come to that area. So what do I do is I will place the magnetic material, okay, the iron container at that location. So surprisingly, you will find that okay, the magnetic field line will still go as per normal. Maybe it will come out from North Pole. It will still go from start from the north. They will be still be uh, closely spaced together when they are near to the magnet. They will still not cross each other. But now instead of going straight like this, going straight from north to south, what it does is because it's magnetic material in the mid, in the middle there, so the few lines will be attracted to the magnetic few lines. Or the, the few lines will be attracted to the magnetic material. So now the few lines will actually go through the magnetic material. So you look at the picture, you'll find that it will actually enter the magnetic material. And the best thing about all the interesting thing about all this is they will still go through the magnetic material. And what the magnetic material does is it actually allows the magnetic few lines or it actually direct the few lines through the body. So I can actually redirect the few lines. So instead of the few line going from left to right straight, I can actually still make the few line go from north to south, left to right, okay, straight. But instead of going direct path, I can actually cause a few lines, okay, to flow around my material. Take a look. The few lines now actually follow the shape of the container, the magnetic material. 
So what it does now, it actually goes across or you're around the area or you go through the magnetic material and exit the magnetic material. And because of the design or the shape of the magnetic material, whereby it is hollow at the center here, you'll find that the few lines, none of the few lines actually now passes through the area. The few lines now actually follows the shape of the magnetic material. If it's hollow, there's no magnetic material in the middle. Your few lines will not flow through the area. Okay, you take a look at the picture, you actually follow through the magnetic material. And the few lines, it will still go from north and it will still enter, it will still go to south. Okay, but right now the path they had done is the container now actually so-called redirect the few lines in a new orientation, in the new directions. And because of that, okay, I am actually able to protect my equipment okay, to prevent many few lines from entering the area here. And this is what we do, well, this is what we mean by shielding. I want to shield few lines from entering using magnetic material. So which means if I redesign my magnetic material, if I use, let's say if I, my magnetic, magnetic material is um, my magnetic material is a vertical bar. You'll find that my north pole, my few lines will actually go and it will actually follow the design of the material, material itself. So if it's vertical, you'll find that my few lines go through instead of going straight through. Okay, my few lines upon entering the magnetic material, it will actually follow the shape of the material. So if it's a vertical bar, you'll find that if it's a left to right, if the few line come from the left, if your magnetic material is vertical, you'll find that my few line will actually divert and some will go up, some will go down. And as a result, my right side here will not experience any few line at all. Okay, this is what we mean by magnetic shielding. I actually shield the area from magnetic few lines by redirecting the few lines. Okay, this is how shielding is achieved. How you can have a now zone, okay? But how can you get rid of the fuel line from the area? The main thing is to get uh, to redirect the fuel lines. Okay. Oh, uh, one thing before we end this. Okay. Uh, magnetic fuel lines. Okay. You will find that uh, maybe wherever you have a magnet, it actually points to the north pole of the magnet. But like we all know, is that the idea of a light poles. Okay. The idea of why my magnet always point north. So if I have a magnet, it points there. Oh, there's a north pole. We always say the magnetic north pole points north. Okay, but scientifically we know that it doesn't, it may, it's a, there's a bit of ambiguity whereby my magnet points north. So we always say, or most of the geography people will say that, oh, that because the magnet north pole point there, it is a north pole over there. But we all know that north pole, my magnet point there because of one thing, because there's unlike poles at the other end, because I know unlike poles attracts. So when we always, when I say my magnet point there, Actually, we know that at that corner there, there is actually a south pole because unlike poles actually attracts. So when so the, in the sense that there's a bit of ambiguity whereby we talk about your magnetic north pole, a uh, geographic north pole, and your magnetic north pole. Okay, so when we talk about magnetic north pole here, is because okay, my north pole, my magnetic actually point north. But it's actually, but actually, if you look at Earth as a magnet itself, as a piece of gigantic magnet, okay, you'll find that there is actually a south pole at the magnetic north pole. Okay, so it be so such. Why why is it? Because my magnet always point north, and I know that unlike pole attracts. So for my magnet to point north every time, it will mean that the south pole is actually here. So inside the Earth iron core, it's actually, if you look at it as a big gigantic magnet, it's actually have a gigantic south pole at here. And because of that, my north pole, my magnet always point north. And that's what we mean by magnetic north pole. Okay. Now, uh, last thing, okay, we look at your, once you know the idea of producing the magnet, so we now look at two, uh, two types of magnet, temporarily and uh, permanent magnet. Here we look at two particular one. We look at your iron and steel. Okay, so you look at iron and steel. Okay, they are all magnetic material, but there's a fundamental. There's a small difference between them is that iron and steel. One is easy to magnetize. For example, iron. Iron is easy to magnetize. Steel is hard to magnetize. Okay, and the idea of hard to magnetize meaning it takes longer time. Okay, it takes a longer time to magnetize and it takes longer time to demagnetize. Even though they are magnetic material, but they are fundamentally a bit different. 
iron is easy. So it means it is it take almost instantaneous. Okay, it take almost instantaneous to magnetize and to demagnetize. Okay, and as a result, we always use iron as a temporary magnet because whenever I want the magnet, I switch on the electricity. Iron bar will become a magnet instantly. If I need a permanent magnet or I need a, a stronger magnet, I will actually use this steel bar. Okay, because once I activate the uh, metal, I, I, I imbue magnetism onto a steel bar. It takes longer time to imbue, yes. But the purpose about this is that once I imbue magnetism onto the bar there, it takes takes a long, long time for the steel bar to lose its magnetism compared to iron. Iron, the moment I in, uh, bestow, imbue magnetism onto that iron bar through maybe electricity process, the moment I switch off the electricity, the iron bar will lose magnetism instantly. Okay, so if you look at the keywords here, the underlying between uh, iron bar and steel bar is quite straightforward. But when you look at your answering technique, when you look at answer, answering technique, students, you need to be careful. You need to constantly remind yourself this is the keyword that you need to use. Okay, keywords that you need to use. Okay, why iron bar is used, why steel bar is used. It's because of NIMBY magnetizing and magnetizing effect. Okay. And there are various use of magnetizing uh, magnets. Okay, it can be a permanent magnet. Okay, it can be a fridge magnet. It can be a re-switch. Okay, a re-switch with a pair of soft magnet, which means whenever I bring a magnet nearby, I can actually attract the contact to be close. So I actually don't need a physical switch. All I need to switch on the switch is actually put a magnet there. It will be attracted to each other and they will be, and the switch will be closed. And same thing, the moment I remove the magnet, the switch will open or and the circuit will be broken and the electricity will stop. Okay, and likewise, temporarily magnetic, there's 1001. A common one will be electromagnetic, moving loudspeaker and moving emitter. Okay, so this is where I end off. Okay, it's a long one, slightly overshot my timing of 18 minutes. Now it's 21 minutes really. Okay, so I will not hold you guys up. Okay, so in the short, okay, we have done uh, various, uh, the, the summary of these things, okay, in this topic, okay, it's a short one. Okay, so please, if you are confused or you have anything that you want to ask, okay, feel free to leave your comments at the bottom. Okay, if not, remember to subscribe to my channel and to keep updated to the videos that I'm going to uh, upload in the upcoming days. Okay, thank you and have a nice day, gentlemen, ladies.